Hello people of YouTube, welcome to my living room and to episode number 21 of my creative podcast. I'm Selma and you can find me on the internet, uh, that's mostly on Instagram and Ravelry, as Selma's Knits. Um, I thought I'd change the introduction a bit because I figured that there are not only knitting addicts watching this, so let's be a little more inclusive. Um, welcome. Welcome if you are a returning viewer. Welcome if you are a new viewer. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I want to start by thanking each and every one of you who subscribed to my channel because last time I checked we've passed a thousand uh, subscribers and that's amazing. For me it's just, um, <laughs> it's just huge and I'm really really grateful um, for each and every one of you. Um, keep an eye on my Instagram account um, in the next few days because I will be organizing a small giveaway. Well, nothing gigantic, but something to thank you in a little more concrete way. Well, today we'll talk about knitting and sewing and uh, about my recent purchases because there was the Fil de la Manche festival last weekend. I think it was translated to channel threads and I did buy a few things there. But anyway, grab your whip, grab your cup of tea or coffee or your mojito if you feel like having one um, and let's go! Earlier today it seemed like my neighbor had started um, working on his guitar playing and now they're moving all the furniture around again. I'm really sorry if you can hear any of it. Um, today I'm drinking a tea which we bought when we were in Dresden uh, two years ago, I think. It's called a Spring Walk Through Dresden and it's a green tea with rose and apricot, I think, and flowers, uh, <laughs> petals, things. Mm. It's really nice, but I think once it's done, it's done because we're not going to Dresden anytime soon. Today I have several finished objects to show you. The first one being this. It's the Astor Blouse by Colette Pattern. The patterns. And I really like it. I finished it two days ago, I think. It's Chambre, which I bought online on a French website. To be honest, I did not choose the easiest one. I made the version that has long sleeves and the pleats in the front. And if I were to do it again, I would definitely go for at least short sleeves because the pleats are not the most complicated. It's a bit annoying to cut up the pieces because of the serrated edge, basically, but the pleats themselves are not that complicated to make. But the long sleeves, that's a different story. Um, this part, particularly the sleeve placket is a bit, it was a bit confusing, but fortunately I managed to find, um, well I was looking at instructions for the pleats at first and I found the sew along that Colette organized uh, on their website or on their sister cousin website, uh, where basically everything was explained with pictures, so I could, it was much easier to follow. Well, what can I tell you? I really enjoyed doing it, although it was complicated, honestly, um, I didn't think I would have to learn so much as I was going, but I'm glad I did because I did learn a lot. The finishing is not the most perfect, but it's mine <laughs> at least. Um, yeah, I know there are points of improvement, but it doesn't matter. I'm always a work in progress anyway. I really, really like the buttons which I found uh, at the festival. So channel threads last weekend. They come from um, textile, textile garden. Um, they were in Edinburgh as well with a huge display, uh, but I didn't need anything from them. So I just enjoyed the, 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 the site and didn't buy anything there. But I bought these, I don't really know how it's called, mother of pearl, I think, or something like that. Buttons with those black stripes. I think they look really nice on the dark chambray. Yeah, there. I was I was going for something a bit more, let's say, subdued originally, but in the end, I'm glad I went for for these, which are a bit more original. Yeah, and also it was the first time I made buttonholes with my sewing machine, and I also saw 
I used it for the buttons as well. Um, and it was much simpler than I actually expected. Although with the buttons I did break two needles because you really need to hold onto them tight and I didn't and they slipped and the needle just broke. Yeah, shit happens, I guess. Uh, I had done the sleeves, well, the sleeve attachment already on the Moneta dress, so it was not <clears throat> a complete discovery for me, and it went fine, but uh, this part was definitely what took me the longest. I started it like around 8 maybe, and then I thought, oh, it's okay, I will just make one. Hmm? Went to bed at 1. <laughs> yeah. Because once you've made one, you know, you have to make the second. In case you forget between both. Anyway, that's that's how I roll every single time. So that's it for this blouse. I really like it. Maybe I will make it a little shorter next time, but I still really like it. It's actually a little warm for now. So um, yeah, I've been considering changing, but no, I think I will keep it for now. Kept the window open because the weather is so glorious today. Yesterday we had five degrees and, and, and rain and cold and wet and everything. And today it's um, it's sunny. Probably not that warm, but sunny, definitely. Anyway, enough with the weather. Uh, on to the f first and only uh, knitting finished object which I have, which is my Lunar Phase MCAL by uh, Larissa Brown. So it is not a mystery anymore because it's finished and she's revealed the complete shape of the of the shawl. So I blocked it again, but I think I was a bit sloppy and they're not exactly similar, the sides. But I don't really mind. So you had those two quarters, let's say, triangles and the half circle and uh, I joined them using a uh, three needle bind off as uh, recommended by the pattern but I did use a slightly different version of the of the three needle bind off because I actually found it on the Pearl Soho website pretty sure it was there and it's a version where you actually get like a braid you know or a yeah Kind of braid instead of the row reg the regular row so you you do it on the on the right side of the knitting and i think it worked quite well to be honest you don't have a ridge or a bump or a valley between both anyway and then after the three needle bind off you had short rolls between the parts to assemble them so in the end, the shape is really, really weird. Uh, you can see it better on the pictures, which I put on my, on the Ravelry page of the project, which I took in Venice uh, last last weekend. I finished it while I was in Italy. I, that was the most annoying part of the knitting. It was weaving in all the ends because I was lazy and I didn't do it while I was actually, well, in between parts. I should have because it was really really long in the end you had a lot of ends to weave so next time i do something like that such a big project with so many changes of color i will definitely um within the ends before i'm completely done it was an experience let's say because since i was really really short on time every time in between parts I basically, if I wanted to be on time, I had to really focus on that project. And to be honest, after four weeks, I was a bit fed up with it. I just wanted it to be over and 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 finished and uh, to be able to wear it. So I don't think I will be doing any mystery cal anytime soon, just because. <laughs> Sorry. I don't want to, to have the same experience as I had with the What the Fade mystery call, you know, which well, the brioche knitting was much too, I was much too slow with it. So I couldn't keep the pace. And in the end, I never finished it. It's not finished yet. Um, could never have done uh, one, one part in one week, basically. 
So at least with this one, since it was fairly simple shapes and stitches and patterns, um, it was okay and I could fit them in one week, but still, I was bored at some point. So I'm glad I did it, but I'm not sure I'm going to make uh, something similar anytime soon. I know not everyone also liked the shape of the, of the pattern. It is unusual, but at least you can wear it either. Well, what I do is that I can wear it either as a shawl, really, like that's what I did in Venice because the, because, um, well, in the shade is pretty cold over there. <laughs> it can be pretty cold. So you can basically cover your full arms, you know, and wear it as a cover all, cover up, whatever. Or, or just this way, but in that case, the ends are pretty long. Or you can wear it, well, basically as a scarf, like wrapped around your neck several times because it's big. Or, and that's what I do mostly. Where's the right side? Yeah. You can fold it in half and wear it this way. And that way you can really cover your whole neck. not the best way to show the pattern but it's supposed to be worn still and if it if it doesn't cover you then what's the point so yeah i like it that way but i'm too warm now so we'll take it off we can move on to the works in progress i have two which i'm working on at the moment the first one is late already because my new nephew arrived on friday i think thursday or friday last weekend but it's the Lille Kimono, which I'm making in Lille Louise, which is regular wool. Uh, I finished one sleeve and I just have to do the second one. I've uh, started weaving in the ends already. I need to um, find a better way to finish this because I don't know if there is anyone who knows how to actually make perfect underarms. Um, at first trial, let's say, or when you're actually taking up the sleeves, please let me know because I have no idea and I always need to touch them, to touch up on them. So yeah, I finished this one. I just need to do the second one. The holes there are not really holes. They're button holes. Well, button. It's supposed to be your ribbon. They're going through, which you attach here on the front. There. So it's not just me leaving holes randomly on the side. Yeah, it's the three month shape, but since the baby was already almost four kilos, I definitely need to um, to be a little faster, but just the sleeves go pretty fast, so it should be okay. Like in one or two days, I will be done with it. And then I can make the small boots, but then last time I, it only took me one evening to make them, so it should be fine. The second working project which I have is the Secret sweater, which is a pattern by Atelier Emily. I've started on, on one sleeve and I've attached my new 30 centimeters needle, need, 30 centimeter needles. Um, yeah, I will tell you about this first. It's made with Lena Mouret yarn, but it's uh, held double with mohair, which is also from Lena Mouret. I really like the color. I keep this, the first uh, yarn balls attached to the body because if I can avoid having to, you know, weaving ends and everything, I will do it. And I am using a second one for this first sleeve. I don't see any difference in color, to be honest. So that's a good thing. The 30 centimeter needles. For now, I'm not sure if I really like them because, uh, well, the short needles are pretty hard to um, get a hold of. But I will say that it is definitely more pleasant not to have to uh, pull on the on the cable every time I need to uh, to turn the side as I would do for with the magic loop you know and that way you also avoid having one side which is stretched you know as you could have if you were using magic loop where you turn the cable well, where you have the cable coming out sometimes it can stretch that's what I was saying with my um, socks last time we will see and for now I think I will try to really focus on it once I'm done with the um, with the um, baby 
cardigan because I would like to be able to take it to Scotland with me and that's in three weeks. So either I will wear it or, um, or I will just keep it as a cover on my legs while I finish it. But yeah, I'd like to be, um, like to be more advanced on it also because the cal finishes uh, at the end of this month. So yeah, fingers crossed. That's it for my whips. Um, now I can show you everything I bought. So first things first, and yeah, put them there. I ordered new um, new needles when I got the 30 centimeter ones. I also got 80 centimeter ones with which are two millimeter, 225 and two and a half for lace and for a magic loop on socks. Because I don't think I would be able to actually handle the 23 centimeter um, needles. I think they would be way too small for my hands. I ordered them from Pearlescence, which is a British website, and uh, it they arrived very fast. I had no shipping fees because my order was over 25 pounds. I'm really happy about it. Uh, what else did I get? I got I got a pattern, a sewing pattern. It's the latest from uh, Dessinois en Patron. It's a dress and a top. It's called they're called Leaf. And so you have a fake wrap, which wraps in the back with a round color in the front and a V in the back. And the top is just a shorter version and doesn't wrap, it has buttons, but it's also a V-neck in the back. Yeah, I want to make it for a wedding where I'm invited in, in June, but I don't have the fabric to make the wedding version just yet. Because that wedding has a pretty... Um, Demanding dress code, let's say, color-wise, and I really need to find something which will not make me look like a ghost. And it's over three days, so I need um, a different outfit, at least for the first two. Yeah, it's going to be some work. And I'm pretty sure I will not find anything in the shops, because it's not in season. And it doesn't suit anyone, really. The dress code is peach color peach or well and everything that goes along with it like champagne or or pastel pink and yeah nothing that really fits me so i'm looking for a fabric to make this dress for the brunch on sunday um what else did i get i got fabric i got regular cotton bodice for a top which I'm going to make, but I, I don't. I'm not sure I will actually use this one. We will see because it's not well. It's matte, and I think I might prefer a more shiny one. I got this um, this navy blue with fireflies. It's not transparent, which is good because I'm going to make the top or a short dress. Because you, yeah, forgot to say that for the leaf dress, you have a shorter version and a longer version. So over and under the knee. I think I will make a shorter version of it. Um, yeah, it's good that it's not transparent because that way I can wear it without having to bother about showing or flashing my underwear to everyone. And it's nice. Um, yeah, it's really nice and soft and I think it will be perfect for the that kind of shape, you know, for the dress. I also got two other fabrics one will be used for the dress and i'm not sure about the other one i'm not actually exactly sure what i will make with either but it's a black um with cranes like japanese inspiration fabric and the other one is just a shorter piece of it because that's all they had left but in the same pattern but in navy blue these are transparent though, so I will definitely have to wear something under the dress if I make it. I think it will be, yeah, it will be my first time sewing with such fluid fabrics, so it will be a new experience again. I also ordered, it's off-white, it's not really white, and it's not transparent, which is super nice, because I'm going to make a top out of it with this as a shoulder piece. It's going to be the top, which is called Back is Back by Vanessa Pouzet. Um, and I will be wearing it on top of a skirt, which I will make for the wedding, because as I said, 
any of their regular dress code colors will make me look like a ghost. So at least with that, I will have a bit of a contrast, you know. We will see how it turns out, though. No, I will definitely keep you updated on that. Uh, I received this week the West Highland Way book by Kate Davis. It's the book that sums up um, her West Highland Way club for this year. The West Highland Way is a, is a walking route that goes through the West Highlands. And so every week I received an email with a pattern and well, that was on Tuesday, I think. And on Fridays, I got an email um, about the inspiration and the route itself. And so the book has all of this. Love it. The pictures are beautiful. The texts are amazing. She is, well, it's her husband who takes the pictures and she writes the accompanying text and she's really an amazing writer honestly it's a it's not only a knitting book it's a beautiful book which i will have a lot of um i'll have a lot of fun reading and perusing in the future it was already really pleasant to read the emails so having the book is even better I had her inspired by Ayla last year and I really liked it and that's why I went with this club again. So we have everything that I ordered online in the last weeks and now I can show you what I bought in Normandy last weekend. I've Let's start with this. It's a gradient, it's 200 grams of merino and nylon. So it's 850 meters by La Fifille. I saw Cécile, so La Fifille, knitting it at an event where we were together and I just I just thought, wow, that's, that's gorgeous. I don't know how many she brought to the festival, but I bought her last two, but what, the second one is not for me. Um, it was an order from a friend. It's called Coucher de Soleil, which means sunset, and it's definitely the way, well, it's definitely the name I would have given it myself, so going to be beautiful. I think I will make a shawl out of it, but I'm not exactly sure which one just yet. But I will let you know. What else did I buy? I bought wool uh, from Laine des Îles. It's Snelden. I hope that's how you pronounce it. They co it comes from the Faroe Islands. And I took white navy, well, I think you can call it midnight blue, and black. Honestly, yeah, oh yeah, there you can see the difference, I think, between the blue and the black. Uh, and I'm going to get leftovers from a friend who has the gray because I'm going to make um, color work with them. I'm not exactly sure which patterns just yet, probably mittens or a hat, uh, but we will see. So it's 100 grams, 260 meters, and that's these two are 50 grams. It smells a bit cheapy but not as sheepy as this one. That's awesome. <laughs> it's uh, British Hampshire four ply by from the Little Grey Sheep. And this beautiful burgundy. It's uh, 230 meters for, for 60 grams. And we were there on her, on her stand with my friend and we were like, hmm, hmm, sheep. <laughs> We probably did look a little crazy, but it was fun and I really like the smell of this. I'm not exactly sure what I will make with it either, but I will find something. Um, and I only bought, bought one because I know I will put it in a color work project, so I don't need a lot. I didn't buy any sweaters quantity because there is um, another festival coming up this next weekend and I know that I want some stuff from the dyers there. so. I'm keeping my money for the sweaters for a bit later. Concerning yarn, I got this small, it's a 50 gram uh, skein of sock yarn. So Merino and Nylon by Madeleine et Philibert. And the colorway is called Dieppe. It's the, it's a special colorway that she dyed for this festival because Dieppe is the bigger city, which is close to where it was taking place. So it's a dark gray with blue colors, well, blue accents, 
And it did look like the sea in Dieppe, to be honest, because we were there after we went to the festival um, just to eat something and take a look at the sea. And it was very, very close. And I got two minis to put in my um, in my memory blanket. I got this one from Vol Met Metverve. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it right. It's Dutch. So it's merino socks. So 75, 25 merino and nylon. The color doesn't really have a name. It's numbers, but yeah, it's a pretty color. And I got this one from Live or Die Yarn, which is an Italian brand. It's called Lord Phi, like the Greek letter, you know, like in philosophy and stuff like that. Uh, it's 100% superwash merino. I really like the change in colors there. I also bought a kit to make Latvian mittens. Knit like a Latvian or how to make a pair of genuine Latvian mittens. So on the back you have several... Um, patterns let's say but uh, Enrico at Les Tricoteurs Volants didn't have all of them but he had different ones as well so in the kit you get the the, the pattern with the chart and the instructions and uh, and the yarn that goes along to make them and this yarn smells like sheep as well this makes me happy I'm going to have so many mittens next year next winter rather or maybe next week given how it's going at the moment <laughs> anyway i won't be able to finish them next week until next week uh concerning non-yarny things i bought a new badge from vilaine i didn't get any yarn from her i was very brave i was strong uh from lily come too i got this ring which i'm going to use to try color work uh continental style with two colors we will see what it looks like i tried it with one color already and it does seem to um, help regulate the tension of my yarn so we will see how it works and it was a fun thing not too expensive so i thought even if i never use it was not a ruin um from lily come too as well i got i don't know how you can count that a row counter i don't know so basically it has 10 loops and also I chose it because it's the Deathly Hello symbol. Um, so it has 10 loops and a progress keeper. And basically you change the loop as you go along your pattern to remember how many rolls you have between uh, decreases, for example. I think it's convenient. Well, it will avoid me having to write down every time. Uh, the last thing I got, which was for me, is this project bag which is uh, from Lena Mouret so the dyer whom I um, uh, got the yarn from for my secret pullover sweater it's a big one because I thought even a baby cardigan takes some space in the end and uh, a small project bag is not always the best for that so it says un écheveau est une gourmandise qui ne, met pas gross qui ne fait pas grossir so that's a skein is a how to say that is a treat that doesn't make you fat, let's say. And yeah, well, actually these colors, this project bag or this this uh, thing definitely fits with the dress code of the wedding I'll tell you. Um, yeah, it's also the, the benefits from this bag, if I'm not mistaken, go to the uh, charity called Les Chevaux, Les Chevaux Solidaires. That... <sighs> More yarn. Here's you. Um, my neighbor is moving every weekend. What was I saying? Yes, it goes to a charity that goes to research for... I will write it down because I'm really not sure how it's called in English, but it's for a good cause. Well, I'm done. I showed you everything I bought. The only thing I kept secret is the the few, well, the couple of things which I bought for the giveaway, which will take place on my Instagram feed very soon. I want to keep them a secret until I, I, I actually gather everything and I can um, just make it, put it out, you know. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please, why, should, why, why exactly do I do that? Always. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, please um, like it, share it, subscribe to my channel. Um, 
it makes me incredibly happy to see those uh, those numbers um, and um, and yeah it's fun the more the merrier I wish you a very good day or evening or week or whenever you're watching this um, enjoy your knitting enjoy your sewing and take good care of yourself see you very soon bye